Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I heard a buzzing in my ear, so I went to see the doctor. He told me there was a bug going around. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Cthulhu, Death May Die, Ithaqua, the Wind Walker from Come On. In Cthulhu, Death May Die, Ithaqua, the Wind Walker, this is a new boss, a new standalone boss you can add into your game of Cthulhu, Death May Die. Now, he's pretty cool. He's got a really good, tall, creepy mini that looks fantastic here. But then, of course, he has the Shantak, a couple of Shantak minis that are also going to come out and plague your game. Of course, you get the various stages for the cards uh, for uh, Ithaqua, and then you also get the Mythos cards and the cards for the Shantax. But one of the coolest things here is a token. It is a uh, Blizzard token. Ithaqua has a lot of funky things to do with weather. So one of the things that happens in uh, the game when you play with Ithaqua is the Blizzard token is going to be moving around the board. Huh, no big deal. It gets a little cold. You're saying you would be wrong, and how dare you speak to me like that. What the Blizzard token does is it actually fools with your, your, your stress level. If it enters in a room with you or you enter into a room with it, you immediately lose uh, to stress and you are prevented during a rest action or through any other means of gaining back your tension level if that is in the room with you. With the Shantax, if they deal any damage to a defender, you actually move the Blizzard token one space closer to that defender. Now, it may seem like a little thing, but I can assure you in Death May Die, where every single point of health and tension and movement and actions matter, it can be a big, big deal. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. So we played Cthulhu Death May Die the other night with Ithaqua. Uh, it was me, Ray, and Chris, and we had a blast. It was really a lot of fun moving around the board, trying to stop the ritual, trying to prevent Ithaqua from uh, you know, completing his nefarious schemes here. <clears throat> it was tough. In fact, I played, I played maybe, I don't know, half a dozen or so games of Cthulhu Death May Die total, right? And... This one, I've never won it. I've never won the game. This one, I came as close as I ever have. Literally, if we had had, like, if one character had had maybe one more action, we could have won the game. It could have worked out for us. And that's what you want from a good cooperative game like uh, Cthulhu Death May Die, is you want to fail more often than you win. I'm confident I'll win one of these days, but this game is so good, and Ithaqua is another great villain that I just had an absolute blast with in this game, and I think uh, I think you will too. As an expansion, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to rate Ithaqua an 8 on the Cody scale. I think it is tremendous fun. I think if you are a fan of the game and the game system, this is one you will definitely want to pick up. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, I'd ask you to please give a thumb to this video on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please check us out on Facebook and Twitter, and please leave a thumb for this video on Board Game Geek as well. If you like what we do here, please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, military history, books on history, those sorts of things. I even put up some of my lectures on that channel. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to that channel. And if you do really enjoy the stuff we do here, I would humbly ask you to click on the Super Thanks button 
and leave a tip. You know, I recently bought an original Van Gogh coffee table. I can tell it's authentic because it had a bit of veneer missing. Oh, I know. Sheesh. So dumb.